If you were lucky enough to have a T6.1 California, you'd have a nice little screen in this position that shows you the voltage information from the leisure battery. This video is about fitting a Vitron shunt to my leisure battery and then using my mobile phone to monitor that uh, Vitron shunt and show the same information as I would have been getting on the screen. This is the stuff you're going to need. This is the shunt. These are some connectors that we will need to replace on the car probably and we're going to need an additional battery strap. Uh, I've gone for the Vitron shunt. Uh, I've unfortunately bought the 500 model which uh, has these M10 uh, bolts in the top of it. The 300 has the M8 which would have been a lot a lot easier to work with because um, uh, all the stuff that you buy um, for this voltage is all um, um, is all coming with M8 so I'm gonna have to chop the, this off and replace it with an M10 and the same in the car and if I bought this as a 300 I wouldn't need to do that uh, and it's a toss-up between sending it back and um, and working and working with this one uh, I think this might be better if I want to eventually have a solar system so I'm gonna persist with it okay so regarding connecting it there are I'm looking at two options for connecting it. Um, option one is uh, is this option. So it's just the shunt monitoring the leisure battery and using the screen on my smartphone uh, to look at the, um, the data. And option two is a little bit more advanced and that will allow me to monitor the leisure battery, again, using the screen on my phone. And then I can run in an extra cable and then monitor the um, voltage off of the car battery as well. This is the one I'd like to do ultimately but for today I'm going to do the more simple one and I will lay in this additional cable when I've got the dashboard out for some other job uh, and then I'll connect that in and update this uh, video when it's done. Let's get on with the job. We'll loosen the bolts holding the seat down and then we just we can then rock the seat backwards to expose the wiring underneath. So Underneath the seat, we can see we've got a bit of a noodle solid going on. This is the uh, uh, excess wire from the um, standing heater that was retrofitted to the vehicle uh, by previous owner. Uh, I'm going to have to tidy that up. Um, I'm going to put, it's basically all this is, is the connections to the battery. And there's a, you know, before, there's, a, there's a fuse box that comes with the kit for the standing heater. And we're going to get rid of this, cut back all that wire. And I'm going to put these two fuses into this block here, which you can relatively easily get out. We'll come to that in a bit. Um, First, we've got to remove the seat completely. And for that, we need to disconnect these connectors here. The yellow is the airbag. The other two, I'm not sure which is which, but one's the heated seat and one's the uh, uh, warning for the seat belt. That there's an occupant in here. It's important that you uh, don't put the ignition on once you've uh, disconnected the uh, these wires because you might get an error code. So you press the little tabs on the side and these guys should slide out. Get your fingers in each side, peeks it out. Hopefully that was visible. Try and do that one like two hands there you go like that and this one you press that black button and then slide it towards you like that and then pull the whole thing off like that and just... with the seat out we can now tidy up the wires i want to show you in detail how to fit the cables into the original fuse holder out. so you pull the little tabs either side and then press it down and feed it, feed it out. So hopefully you saw that. There's two positions of a little arrow just here. I'm going to point with my finger, a screwdriver. And just here on the side, there's a little, that's in the locked position. So the arrow is just there. And then if I slide that like that, now the case is open and I can take my pre prepared cable end and I just literally just drop that, drop that in a hole until you get the click. And that's, and now that's located in and then clip it back to lock it. 
and then feed that cable back through. If you don't have that factory fuse holder, this is a close-up of the part number, so you can order one. And these are the connectors which go into it. The difference is the size of the wire that you can fit into the connectors. Right, so determine which size connector to use, what you need to do is you strip a little bit of the wire back. I'm just gonna set that to six, because you don't, that's how much you need for these connectors. And then you put that in, strip that off. And before we deform that wire by twisting it, we just stick our calipers on and we measure it to so 2.45. And we look over to our uh, chart over here, and this is readily available on the uh, internet. And we look at 2.4, and that gives us the diameter, the, the area of the, of the conductor. So it tells us it's a 4 millimeter squared. And we look at our little packet. This one covers up to 2.5, so that's not right. And this one is for 4 millimeters, so these are the right size. And then we, uh, yeah, obviously crimp that on. Need to also make sure that we're using the right crimping tool. And you see underneath here, it says 4.0. So this is the right jaw to use for this connector. So everything has to match. Wire, connector, crimping tool, and then it will then it should work. And if it doesn't, dob a solder and that'll just hold it together firmly. Here I'm doing a classic card template to attach the shunt to the seat. Um, it gives me the opportunity to lay out the holes and test fit where I want the shunt to be. Once it's right, I can transfer it to metal. So I've made my little bracket that's going to fit here with the shunt on top. ready. So I've got most of the wires connected. I've connected the power supply from the battery to the shunt. Uh, I fed that down following the positive power cables uh, and taped it so it goes here and you can just undo this one screw, lift that out and then you can tape along the, the red power loom where to where it then goes across the car floor there and then you spur up off here. There's a good fixation point just here, and then and then terminate it here. Um, I've got the battery cable that I bought. I've drilled that out to M10, uh, and then fed the extra length to create a larger loop. I'm uh, I'm not going to redo the end on that. I've got this is the original earth cable from the car, and this is the one that you're going to have to change the end off. I cut it off uh, earlier. That was the original. Um, uh o fitting that was uh, on it uh, so it's not it's it's for an m6 um this is an eight mil drill bit but you can see that you could pr fairly easily drill that out to take m8 and then fit on the 300 shunt i've unfortunately as i said before got the 500 shunt and i need the m10 and that's why i've got um got one of these so this is so it's sc10 for the cable size and then 10 for the hole size there. And we've got to fit that guy on there. Get Make sure we get all of the copper. Ooh, keep... All of the, uh, all of the threads of copper in, there you go, nicely done. Right, now we bring, bring over the, the tool. So I'm using this tool. You saw in an earlier video that I had a different tool. Well, that one didn't work, so I bought another one and hopefully this one's going to do the job. I also spent a bit more money on the uh, terminals, so that uh, these are German-made terminals, not Chinese ones, and uh, hopefully they're a bit more, uh, they work better, we get a, what I consider a professional result. So I just need to check that I've got the cable fully seated in the back, it's going to be a bit fiddly. Ah, that's a bit of a three-hand job, uh, three job, really. So, can we push that down? Yeah, I mean, we're, the, we're compressing on the metal now, it's not going to achieve anything more. Right, let's check that out. Hopefully that's... Yep, that ain't coming off for anything. Perfect. So, yeah, I mean, the other tool just had no chance. That's, uh, yeah, it wasn't easy, but it it worked. And, uh, yeah, a lot better. I'm sure the more unscrupulous person would now send that back to Amazon, but uh, I shall keep it. And, uh, right, so that goes system minus. So system minus is where the... Uh, 
all the old cables to the the battery were. If the more eagle-eyed of you will have noticed that previously this uh, pipe was not connected to the battery, I freed up some length from that was stuck underneath the carpet and uh, reconnected that. That's the um, ventilation for the battery and I think that's quite important that that runs because um, that that's connected because the um, when the battery's used, uh, getting hot from charging and from discharging, it discharges a little bit of gas out of there and that might set off your CO2 alarm in the van uh, if you've got one. So, okay, right, so I just need to come get a spanner. I've got one here to crank, crank that up. So it's a 17 if you're interested. And just tight. So connector on the left when looking from the top is going to the negative terminal of the battery. Connection on the right is going to the uh, loads that were originally screwed onto the negative part of the battery over here. And then we've got the positive feed which is powering the, uh, the shunt coming over from the positive battery here. And uh, yeah, good. So let's pop that on and not think too much about it. Here we go. So I can see over here that the uh, little thing that's stuck in the cigarette lighter is lit up. So we still got path. So the, that means that the earth, is, earth loop is now connected. So we've got the power is coming through here into the shunt, coming out of the shunt, going down that cable we just uh, we just crimp, crimped and down to the car body uh, and then the from the car body is coming through that that plug and then going down the positive line that's then popping up and connecting onto one of these connectors here so I just need to crimp that up before I have a chance to forget uh, actually I want to just put a little bit of rotate that round because you want to leave enough space to get the I want to fit that in nice and tight so that the rubber gator can go go over and then we'll uh, download the Vitron app. And... Right, so everything's up and running. Uh, I've installed the app. I don't think I need to go over how to do that. Most people know how to do that. Um, there's a, you have to, uh, before you can access this, you have to um, uh, synchronize, the, synchronize the two. You have to update the uh, firmware on the, on the shunt. Uh, that's taken a few minutes but it's all done now and I've got to this screen and this is where you'll end up and then the next thing you need to do is is you just go up to here and we've got to tell it what kind of battery it's connected to so I just click there and we first set the battery capacity and you can read that off of your battery it's this number here 75 so I just hold that down and then whiz it down to 75 Okay, then I set what the uh, what device is connected to this uh, socket here. Like to connect that eventually to the starter battery, but at the moment it's connected to nothing. So that's what we're going to set. So none. Done. Right, and then we've got some new settings to play with, but well, that's uh, come back to that later. And then this is just giving us then the overview of uh, of what the battery's doing. So we've got that voltage reading that we were missing on the other screen, and we've got the more important time remaining. Uh, so if if we don't take the car for a drive, that's how many days it's going to be before this battery drops down to a critical level, based on the cons current consumption of 0.8 amp hours which is pretty much the uh, phone charger and uh, the shunt that's all I've got in connected at the minute I'm not sure if the stand high is still on um, yeah okay put that with the uh, big cap on the side just pull the loom out of the way perfect right and then uh, clip that back into place 
Right, we're ready for the seats. Lay that over there. If you're interested in costs, I think that's about what I spent doing it. So 162 euros and probably took maybe three hours of actual time to do everything. Thanks for watching.